about to go down. Burning your ears with another all-killer and no-filler episode of the best motorsports radio on the planet. It's the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. With your host, Jim Beaver. Sliding trophy trucks, jumping razors, and dropping the mic at events across the country. Amy Hood. What's up, guys? I'm a professional fun haver, dirt bike rider, and monster truck driver. With support from Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, and Dirtfish. Hang on tight, strap in, and get ready to smoke some tires and lay some roost. Here's the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other. Jim Beaver. What is going on, guys? Another edition of the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here. We got uh, Amy Hood on the line with me. We got uh, a slam pack show today. Jolene Van Vute, she's uh, on in uh, hour number two to cap things off. We got Ryder D. Francesco coming off a win at Loretta's. We've got the all-female trophy truck team of Sarah Price and Shelby Anderson, a couple of good friends of Amy Hoods. They're going to be on the line as well. And then uh, we got the Grabowski brothers racing in that Subaru-powered buggy. They're attacking Vegas Torino. We've got a good mix today, Hood. I don't know, all-female trophy truck team. I'm pretty excited to talk to these ladies. How about you? Oh, absolutely. I I love it. And the fact that, you know, they're good friends of mine. We'll definitely be able to have some fun with them when they get on the air. Yeah. And I know we got a lot to talk about on your end. You were out motorcycle riding, your dad going full blown beast mode over the weekend. (laughs) Uh, We'll talk about that here in the opening segment. I've got Vegas Torino in the star car. I'm teaming up here uh, with a guy uh, you guys may have heard of, Travis Pastrana, but that's going down this week in Las Vegas. Uh, So I have Mr. Pastrana there uh, with me and we'll be racing that. So we're going to talk a bit about Vegas Torino as well as with uh, a lot of our guests. And I'll also be doing some radio with General Tire, an hour-long show with Team GT. Uh, Looks like Jerry Zayden. We're going to have uh, Jim Riley um, and a lot of the other Team GT members as well as Travis Pastrana on air from – Vegas Torino, the General Tire Vegas Torino event. That'll be Thursday at Contingency for an hour, about 1030 Pacific. So that going down this week as well. But uh, we've got to take a short commercial break, and then we're going to get to this epic show with, uh, I think, like five guests thrown in. So it's going to be a ton of fun. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back after this break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. As certain as the sun rises and sets around the world, OTSFF Group is dedicated to providing flexible, comprehensive, and reliable transportation solutions. Air transportation, ocean freight, ground transportation, or a combination of services. We offer innovative and custom-built packages specifically designed to meet your transportation needs. OTSFF Group has been keeping shipments moving globally for nearly two decades. OTSFF Group, flexible logistics services designed for you. More information at OTSFF you're listening to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor all killer and no filler welcome back to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor jim beaver amy hood here kicking off uh Another edition of your favorite motorsports radio show. Had an epic episode number 300 last week. Slam pack guest list, three hours long. And uh, it was uh, was a ton of fun. Thanks to everybody who tuned in. We're still getting, you know, literally a couple days afterwards. I mean, tons and tons of downloads. Uh, if you haven't gone back and listened to that, make sure and do it. Uh, those of you who haven't yet, please go to iTunes, rate, review, subscribe to uh, the Down or Dirty Radio Show, as well as uh, Project Action, my other uh, sideshow. Uh, it's not a sideshow, but uh, it's a show I do on the side of this one. I don't want to call it a sideshow hood. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, it can be a sideshow sometimes. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, we got uh, a bit of everybody over there, but uh, yeah, been a been a ton of fun. Thanks to all you guys for supporting us. Uh, over three hundred episodes. Uh, I know moving forward, I've had a lot of people uh, kind of wonder. You know, we kind of changed up all new website. Make sure you go over to downanddirtyshow dot com. Check that out. Uh, logo changed, and I've had a lot of people wonder, like, what the heck? What's what's going on here? You know what I mean? And uh, I know Amy and I have talked. We've had a lot of conversations over the past year. And uh, as people have seen, we've kind of started cycling in uh, – a little bit of IndyCar stuff and some, you know, and occasionally a NASCAR driver and things like that. And, and people are wondering, like, what's going on? And, and Amy and I have talked, and I think we're on the same page. And, I mean, our, our bread and butter is, you know, off-road and supercross and rally and drifting and the same stuff we've done for five years. But um, her and I like personalities, and we like rad people who do cool things. So if there's somebody that's some, doing something really awesome in IndyCar or somebody like Courtney Force who's just killing it in drag racing, like I don't want there to be a brick wall there where we go, no, we're, we're not going to interview them because they do something over there. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Her and I have talked, and I know you know it's kind of changing the show but uh, a bit, but we're still going to do everything we did before. But I think uh, you and I both want to get these cool personalities on because somebody can drive 330 miles an hour in a car. That's pretty rad, I think. Don't you think, Hood? Oh, absolutely. And that's the coolest part about it. You know, they're super gnarly on the track, and their personalities match. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, don't, uh, so you listeners that are tuning in, don't think all of a sudden, oh, we're going to start giving you NHRA results or something like that. Nah, not happening. I can promise you that won't ever happen here. But uh, we are, uh, we are, you know, we're just going to start opening things up and interviewing some more rad people, just like we always have. But as you can see on this show today, I mean, it's all full of dirt. Sarah Price, Shelby Anderson, uh, Jolene Van Butte, the Grabowski brothers, Ryder DeFrancesco, like we're still definitely dedicated to the dirt. And uh, speaking of dedicated to the dirt changing gears a bit amy hood's dad you got to tell this story because i want to talk about somebody dedicated to the dirt that guy he is full-blown beast mode hood like i mean we've talked about your dad in the past but like i had to text you over the weekend i mad respect for your for your dad you got to tell this story because it's worth telling i know and i got so many texts too on my drive home and on the weekend just like even through my social media, because I was kind of like Instagramming as the weekend went by. But um, so my dad, for the last like seven years, has always gone out to um, a, 
it's an international vet national called uh, Etler Lake. So it's kind of a traveling vet national. Um, people come up from SoCal. I think there's like 10 different rounds, but my dad always tries to make it to the Etler Lake because the track is super bad. Well, this year, um, you know, he was all ready to go and had some, uh, had a buddy he goes with every year. And I guess his friend wasn't feeling too good. So last minute, my, my dad wasn't going to go. And my mom's all sad, and she texts me. She's like, oh, your dad really wanted to go, but his friend backed out. And I'm in. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Like, I'm, I have – my dad has paid his dues driving me around North America, you know, for 20-some years to, to, like, you know, take me to races, take, you know, take me training, whatnot. So the time has come. The roles were reversed. And here I am, 5 in the morning, driving out Friday, driving my dad – 12 hours to Edmonton, Alberta for the Antler Lake International Vet National. So last year, my dad raced plus 60, and he was feeling really good. So he decided to raise plus 40 also. And my dad is 62 years old, okay? So he raced plus 40. This year, he was only going to race the plus 60 and plus 50. So, um, you know, my dad doesn't have any concept of age, and he thinks he is still um, 25 years old. And... I'm, you know, it's day one practice, track mint, super, it's really greasy. They kind of watered it a lot in practice and I'm watching practice and I see this bike down this super gnarly downhill come cartwheeling down the downhill. Then I see this guy cartwheeling behind the bike and I'm like, dang, that, that looks like it hurt. I look, it's my dad. I'm like, oh shit. So, you know what? Oh, pardon me. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, zoot. Right. Zoot alor. Um, I started <laughs> running after my dad here. I'm on the starting line. And my dad is currently down the straightaway. I know it sounds funny, and I know I'm laughing, and everyone's probably horrified, but if you knew our relationship, my dad is so tough. Like, I just knew that. I'm like, what are you doing? It's practice. It's the first lap of practice. I get there. My dad is kind of, like, crawling off the track. And I'm like, Dad, it's practice. You're supposed to slow down. Like, the same lecture that he would give me if I crashed in practice, okay? So it's fine. I can lecture him. My dad must have uh, cut his neck, and he had a huge gash. I think he might have got the helmet strap or uh, maybe hit his head on the bars, but he had a huge gash, five stitches worth, um, you know, in his neck. But It looked yeah, like somebody went took a race. knife to his throat. Like, seriously, yeah, you're not yeah. giving this thing credit. <laughs> He's got this big old thing. You called it a maxi pad on his neck. It looked like somebody took a knife to his throat. It was gnarly. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's the thing. My dad didn't want to go and get stitches right away. He's like, well, I'm going to see how the rest of the day goes. Like, do you have anything? I, I, I only had, okay, PG-13 right here. I don't obviously have giant maxi pads, you know, or adult diapers. Like, you know, I went and knocked on my neighbor's camper door. I'm like, do you have any, like, you know, maxi pads or anything? She comes back with a panty liner. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't think this is going to work. Like, again, my dad has, like, a, a nice sized gash in his neck. So we went and put tons of gauze, and we made a nice homemade maxi pad for my dad's neck, strapped it on there with some medical tape, and made a nice cushion, and he decided to race the rest of the day with this maxi pad. So first moto up. Okay, so my dad has a huge gash in his neck, probably shouldn't be on the line, probably shouldn't be racing, and he should be going to get some stitches. Well, it, my dad is in plus 60 class. He has over a lap lead right now, okay? Why would he be going? wide open when you have a, over a lap lead i don't know but all i see is the medic flag right where like right, the corner before the finish line flag my dad drills a lap or wide open and he's lying in the ground like i i jumped down the downhill probably farther than half of the dirt bikes after him like i was just i was really worried i already knew he was hurting and then i go down my dad's hand is like the size of a balloon he he hit the other guy's bike with his chest, grew some ribs. He is in rough shape. He, and he's on the ground. He's kind of laughing because he's just all, he's so mad. He's so pissed off. He's like, hey, I'm done. I'm done for the day. No more. It took my dad a good, like 20 minutes to get off the track, you guys. And um, we're sitting back at the pit and he's like, I'm, I'm done for the day. I'm like, okay, that's smart. And, you know, I was really worried about him. And, and 20 minutes later, he's gearing back up for his next moto. And he won out the plus 60 overall because he lapped up to second place that moto that he crashed. So they gave him a fourth place finish. He won the next three motos. And my dad won the over 60 vet 
international championship with a balloon by his head, a gash underneath his neck, and bruised ribs. The guy is an animal. He's gnarly. Like, seriously, <laughs> I'm, I'm watching it. You're texting me this story. You're like, go check out my Instagram feed. And poor, I feel bad for your dad, though. He's got, like, the full-blown paparazzi in his face. Here's Amy. Like, her dad's <laughs> got a gash in his neck. He probably can't even talk. And here's Amy with a camera, like, talking to him. I'm like, you know, at one point, your dad's just biting his tongue going, like, Amy, please put the phone away. <laughs> I love oh, it. He thinks it's kind of funny, but the first thing he always says, like anytime he crashes, is aim. Don't tell mom yet. So don't, don't, don't tell mom yet. Okay, just wait a second. Just wait a second. Here he is crawling <laughs> off the track. Doesn't worry about the bike. Doesn't worry about what's broken. Aim. Don't tell mom. Don't tell mom. Oh. It's so funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Good yeah, stuff. I'm serious. My 62 year old dad crawling off the track after a horrific crash. Don't call your mom yet. Oh. All right. Well, we got to take a short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, <laughs> powered by Polaris Razor. But we've got uh, Parker Grabowski, the Grabowski brothers, in that Subaru-powered <laughs> Class 5 car. He's calling in after the break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast. And be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, join on the line by our next guest, Parker Grabowski of the Grabowski Brothers. How's everything going, Parker? 
Good, Jim. Thanks for having me. Oh, stoked to have you guys. I know uh, you guys have been uh, shaking things up in the off-road industry the past six, seven months, man, with this uh, Subaru-powered uh, Crosstrek. Uh, pretty uh, pretty excited to finally catch up with uh, with one of you guys. I mean, uh, it's had to been a pretty fun ride for you guys to, to come into off-road with this, you know, this uh, race car that's so different than everything else. Yeah, you know, we uh, just got back in it in 2016. And uh, first race out with the new Subaru motor built by Crawford. Uh, we won the Sierra LED 250 and have kind of just been uh, developing it since then. And uh, we've actually made a lot of progress on it. And now we're uh, ready to win some races. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, what was the theory behind this? I mean, I know Crawford, he, you know, he comes up with some crazy stuff. But, uh, you know, how did this whole deal get put together? Because, I mean, uh, obviously there's a – I'm a Subaru guy, obviously. I mean, I wear the Subaru hat. You know, it's uh, – you know, I'm part of the Subaru nation. But how did you guys settle on this? Because it's such a unique power plant for desert racing. I mean, it's something we don't normally see in desert racing. And that's what's so cool about this car. I mean, what, what sent you guys down the Subaru path? Yeah, so uh, basically when the car was built in 2007, um, the class still had to run a Type 4 motor. And uh, our car is a little bit heavier, not really a traditional light Class 5. It's pretty heavy, 3,800 pounds. And uh, so we'd kick the Type 4s out of it pretty easily. And so uh, my uncle told our crew chief, Brian, to find the best Subaru that he can find, best Subaru motor builder in the U.S. And uh, stumbled upon Crawford Performance. And it's kind of just been history from there. We put his first motor in our car, did about 1,800 miles of testing on it, and have just been developing it since. And that thing's an absolute beast. And with the torque on that motor, it's just something we've never had in the class before and definitely making a statement for sure. Yeah, the car looks looks super awesome too. Um, and how did the whole relationship with like uh, corporate Subaru came in? Because I mean, we see an off road all the time. Guys run crazy power plants and this and that. But you guys, uh, you know, I you know I I'm involved with them too. And I know uh, you know Rob there from Subaru. He would kind of kept me in the loop on this project kind of since the infancy of it. But um, you know, how, how did that all happen? Because I mean, it's a pretty big deal to have corporate manufacturer backing in desert racing. I mean, it doesn't happen very often nowadays no yeah we are super lucky and stoked to be working with subaru um i think basically court linked up with rob and started getting talking and we know that subaru's just dominated the rally section i mean everyone knows that and i think uh we're a good we're a good into the off-road section and uh just i think they linked up and it was kind of just a match made in heaven with our car and their motors and kind of just been rolling from there yeah. So, I mean, I, I got to ask, what's uh, what's the schedule looking like this year for you guys? I know you did uh, did Baja. We got Vegas Torino, the big one this weekend. Uh, and then what's uh, what's up after that? Uh, we got the Baja One Thousand after Vegas Torino. Okay, so you That'll guys be are the next big one. Oh, nice! You guys are doing the thousand. That'll be solid. So, uh, I mean, take us back. I know you said you guys kind of came back to desert racing. I mean, kind of, kind of give us the history, of you guys, and and you know, and, and how you know your background in desert because I know you were here before. You kind of took some time off, come back. I mean, give us the give us the whole lowdown. I mean, on uh, the lineage here. Yeah, so I'll start it. I mean, it all kind of started back in 1984 with my dad and uh, my uncle Neil. Um, Troy Herbs from Toba Herbs Motorsports asked my dad to go racing. And uh, my dad had no idea what it was about. And first desert race, he was in the Chenoweth VW. It was called Class 2, a Valley Performance car. And uh, my dad went out and was just absolutely blown away with it. And uh, kind of just took it back to my uncle and was like, hey, just went and did this off-road race. It was absolutely awesome. You got to check it out. And uh, my uncle, a little bit younger than my dad, took uh, out to the Fireworks 250 in 86. Nice. And they bought their first car, Class 5 car, in uh, 1986. Uh, $6,500 off of, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was off of a Dusty Times magazine. Yeah. And actually, Troy Hurst picked out their car and told them which one to buy. Yeah, yeah I forgot and they used to have all the their... classified ads in the back of the Dusty Times. That's, like, yeah, that was before yeah. the days of the Internet. Still... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. My dad still has that ad that he bought the car with. Nice. And uh, so they won a championship in Class 5 and score in 1995. And uh, after that, they did a couple of racing. They My uncle co-drove with Brian Collins in his 8 truck and his nice. trophy truck. My dad rode around with Jimmy Smith in the Herbst Truggy. And then um, 
after that, I guess the kids came along. They took a little bit of a break from it. And then we started racing uh, 2007 in the trophy carts and won a couple championships. My cousin Dustin won, uh, I think he won two championships in Junior 1 and Junior 2. Uh, I won two championships in Modified. And then uh, that was in about 2007, 2008. And our Class 5 was actually built in 2007 by Roy DeBond, um, founder of Pro-Am, yeah. owner of McKinsey's and Icon Vehicle Dynamics, a really well-known name in off-road. And uh, so he built the car, and once we started racing it with the Type 4 back probably 2007 to maybe 2009, um, couldn't really find a power plant to hold in it, and kind of took a break from there. I went to school. The Dustin and uh, my cousin did a couple of short track racing. He raced some Legends and did all that, did some go-kart stuff. And uh, I came back from school um, 2015, and... We started getting the car back together, and that's when we linked up with Crawford. Yeah, and it's kind of just yeah. been history since then, just plugging away at it, learning about the car. You know, we're just developing everything. It's it's all new to everyone, so we've just been working at it and just been learning and learning, and it's it's been an awesome experience. Yeah, and it, it's been pretty exciting to watch this. I mean, because even talking, Matt Martelli's a good friend of mine, and I know they're involved in this, you know, kind of helping with the media production and things like that. And, like, he was telling me, he, you know, he and I would talk probably once a week on the phone just about projects and things like that. He's like, Jimmy, he's like, I've never seen – uh, um, you know, a feature on Race Desert gets so darn much traffic. He's like, he's like, it's crazy. He's like, I never would have thought. He's like, you know, and he's like, I got a pretty good feeling for the industry. He's like, I never would have figured something like this would get that much traffic. But he's like, dude, he's like, it's just crazy. And, you know, and, and it is. Every time I see something posted, I mean, I've posted pictures on my Facebook page of your guys' car and immediately, like, it blows up. It's like, I think it's the raddest thing ever that, you know, this car, you know, it just because it's so out of the box like everybody's just like you know they want to know more about it you know yeah no it's definitely uh we were kind of shocked with the outcome came about after the 500 uh i mean when we were down there in mexico we probably had about 200 kids going in and out of the car people were stopping just absolutely loving the car and it's just not a typical class five i mean once you look at it people were guessing they're like is this like a class one with a beam and we'd have to explain to them like no it's a class five it just it was a little meaner looking than most of them. And, uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's just a completely different package than what people are used to. And I think uh, it's kind of what people make turn their heads a little and car makes them second guess what class it is. <laughs> yeah. How hard was it to get, kind of modify the Crosstrek body to, uh, to, to the Class 5 car? I mean, that had to take some work to, to make it, you know what I mean, to kind of get some of those lines in, right? Yeah, we, uh, we had Subaru. They shipped over some body panels, and we took it to – our friend Ron over at Victory Race Cars, and he actually built that body in seven days. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah, while we were pre-running out in, uh, for the 500, we sent the car over to him, and once we got back from pre-running, picked it up and was just blown away by it. Yeah, it's it, – it, and I think the paint, too. I mean, anybody that knows Subaru, I've got a Hyper Blue uh, WRX STI, you know, literally sitting outside of the studio right now. So I'm, like, a big fan of Hyper Blue paint. And then you guys went and threw that Hyper Blue paint on the car, and I'm like, oh, man, it would just it just made it. Because anybody that knows Crosstrek or WRXs, I mean, that's that's the color right there. You guys picked the money, you know. It was uh, – it, it was. I think it just – it all adds up to just one awesome-looking car, man. Yeah, no, it definitely ties in. Um, I was stoked with how everything came out, and uh, now it's just our job to start putting that thing up on the top of the box. Yeah. So uh, speaking of top of the box, Vegas Torino this weekend, um, you know, I know the car's ready. Uh, you know, how, how are you guys approaching this one? How's the driving going to be split up? Uh, you know, what's, what's the plans for this? We're basically just going to take it as it comes. Uh, I'm going to start the race, and once we get out front, we're just going to set a solid pace and – kind of just race the radio, and uh, my cousin will get in uh, maybe halfway point um, if, if uh, all goes well. And, I mean, with these races, you never know what's going to happen. That's what I've learned from coming back. I mean, you could have any plan set in your head of what, what you want's going to happen, and it's not. So uh, we kind of just have learned to, you know, take it as the race comes, see how the car's doing, see how everyone's feeling, and go from there. But Definitely going to be one we need to set a pace just because uh, there's no pre-running involved and 
a terrain we've never really seen. So we definitely have our hands going to be full during that race. Yeah, well, and it's a good warm up for uh, for the Baja One Thousand too. You know, it's you know it's kind of a you know it's a it's a really long distance race, but it's not quite you know the thousand. So you do the five hundred. You've got Vegas Torino. You know, the thousand coming up is pretty pretty good stepping stones there to get yourself ready for the thousand. You know, come November. No, it definitely is. It'll be a good test for the car and a good test for us to see how long we're able to drive and keep up on ourselves. Just because I mean, this upcoming thousand is going to be thirteen hundred miles. And we're going to be splitting that in between three drivers. That's the plan as of now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, before we let you go, where uh, where can people uh, find some of these videos and uh, find out more information on you guys? You can go to Mad Media and check us out. They uh, go on Race Desert. They have a couple of press releases done on us. Um, I'm sure we have a video coming out pretty soon. It's kind of like a Jim Connor style video, a um, little short film we did over while we were testing out Barstow for our shakedown for Vegas Torino. And, uh, yeah, just check us out. It's a pretty sweet build, and I think it'll uh, start making a name for itself real soon. All right. Well, I appreciate the time, Parker. We'll see you at uh, Vegas Torino here in a couple of days. Good luck to you guys, and uh, we'll definitely chat soon. All right. Thanks for having me, Jim. All right. Thanks. And we'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at CaseyHighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey highlights the Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. It's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
Jim Beaver about ready to open up the line here, and I'm a little bit nervous. We got Amy Hood, obviously. We got Sarah Price. We got Shelby Anderson. I'm getting invaded by the by the ladies here, but uh, welcome to the line, Shelby and Sarah. Well, hi, hey. Man, this is uh, this is about. I like to... it. I like it. This is a lot of uh, girl power on the line here, Jim. I think you might have to uh, put your phone on mute and let us women take over. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> we got yeah, we got what an X Games medalist, the girl that had the perfect season, the girl that beat her out of another season. We've got a Monster Jam <laughs> racer. I'm like, I'm looking at this going like, seriously, uh, you know, we want to talk about star power here. It's not me. It's everybody that's on the line. Uh, this is. Uh, <laughs> Pretty well, uh, all female, which I think is even even cooler. Yeah, ex- <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> girls here. So, uh, so you gotta let's go to Sarah first. All right, Sarah. So you and I, I mean, we're we're pretty close. We talk a lot about projects and things like that. I mean, I I knew to, I knew about this off road program for I think since basically you found out because we were actually together when you found out about it. But um, oh, I know, I go right on air. No yeah, we were right on air. You got the text, and it was like ah. So, uh, but um, no, seriously though. So this all got put together. We knew this was coming. You've raced this truck. Uh, Vegas Torino came. Now, now, how did this all work where Shelby got involved now? And now you've got, um, I know you've got Erica, you know, who's your longtime co-driver, but then you brought in Jen Hellstrom. I mean, how did this whole deal get put together for Vegas Torino? Yeah, so at Laughlin, you know, we did an awesome job in the truck, and Clyde was really happy, the owner of the team, and uh, RPM was as well, Justin. And so they were like, okay, like we – we, I don't know if you knew about the truck, but the truck then was considered a, a trophy truck. Um, it had an LP4 engine with it in it with a supercharger. So it wasn't quite competitive to be up front in the trophy truck class. So what they had done is they converted it back to a 6100 to what it's supposed to be. And that's what the chassis, chassis was originally created for. So when we decided to kind of go in that direction, I was already thinking, I was already thinking in the future, like, okay, like, you know, RPM loves to do desert. They're super supportive and loyal to the drivers they bring on. So if this is something that goes kind of more long haul, I'd love to kind of like have a little bit of a plan or idea of who can be in the truck with me. And something like that is, you know, like why not have an all-girl team? There's badass girls out there with tons of talent like Shelby, and they are an asset to a team. They could help us finish, let's say, one day if we end up doing the 1,000. Like, I can't do that alone, and and neither could Mm -hmm. anyone else to be completely competitive. So why not come together and kind of uh, join forces to take things over? So um, I always always had Shelby. She was one of my first choices in my brain. And I had, like, talked about it to a few people. And then Shelby was with Ivan Stewart down in uh, Baja, and they had talked to Clyde. And then Clyde had talked to me and was like, what do you think about this? And I was like, Clyde, I was like, I love Shelby. I was like, I I absolutely love her. I was like, I would be so down to do this and especially have an all-female team. I am totally up for it. And then one thing led to another, and here we are. Well, and Shelby, I got to ask you, I know you you have – driven a 6100 truck or tested at least right with uh w- was it with yancey maybe uh, you you were involved or there was talk about you doing a 6100 or something right i know there was something you mentioned or you and i had talked about at one point yeah i used to actually prep all of scott's razors and stuff and so when he moved up to the 6100 he said you know you should come out with us testing and pop in the co-driver's seat for one time and we we're supposed to do that at the 425 but he ended up just kept on going and not stopping and so we were all cool with that for him but yeah that was kind of the only experience I had with 6100s and then I know Ivan brought up the deal with me because I work with him at Stagecoach every year and he just asked oh like what do you want to do and I told him ultimately like I wanted to be in a desert truck and be in the desert because I've always seen it and that's what I grew up around with Ivan and Walker Evans and my dad and my uncle Randy and everybody and so I was like it would be cool to just go back and bring that back into our family since RJ and Ronnie and everybody's in short course. So yeah, this opportunity came up and I know Clyde had talked to Ivan about having an all girl team. And so Ivan brought it up to me and I was like, well, heck yeah, I would race a lawnmower if somebody wanted me to race a lawnmower. (laughs) I don't care what it is. (laughs) And so we talked to him at the 500 when we were there because Ivan was the grand marshal and he was just 
asked me, would you drive a 6100 Vegas Torino? I was like, I mean, yeah. He's like, all right. And that was kind of it. And then I saw Sarah that same weekend and we all kind of talked about it and, you know, in off-road stuff sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. So I didn't know, but everything started coming together and I have an unbelievably awesome team and Sarah is an amazing driver. She scared the crap out of me the first time I drove with her. Because <laughs> we were going so fast. But yeah, testing went great. And I know we're definitely going to be a competitive team this year. Yeah. Well, and it's funny. You guys that- now, you guys are in a bit of an, an interesting place where, you know, being one of the first all girl teams in the series you know, a lot of eyes are on you. A lot of people are really interested to see how you guys are going to fit, like how you guys are going to fare, what's going to go on, how the dynamics are going to work with an all-girls team. And I know being a racer and, you know, the level of racing that you girls are at, like you love the pressure, but do you feel any additional pressure at all to really kind of stick it to the guys and stick it to them or, um, you know, really succeed? Like, are you feeling it? Is it pumping you up? Is it kind of – you know, is it is, is it being a little bit positive? Or are you feeling any negativity from it at all? No, uh, me and Shelby actually yesterday we uh, we were together and we were talking about it. And we, I actually I don't feel any pressure from from anywhere. The only thing, like I told her, I was like, my only fear is just not being able to hand off the truck to you. And she was like, I'm with you there. She goes, What if I don't I don't I you hand the truck off to me and and I don't bring it to the finish? So. It was pretty cool to have that dynamic, and that's really, you know, like one of our biggest fears is just, you know, um, as not being able to hand it off to each other to enjoy it because we both love it so much. And and Shelby freaking killed it in testing. Like, (laughs) she hopped in with me, and I was like, even when we're driving, like, we're going 100 miles an hour, and I'm just talking to her like, have you even driven with me before? And she's like, "Uh uh-uh, no, don't think so. (laughs) And then I had to hop in with her, her first time in the truck. So Oh, how yeah, was that? Absolutely. Oh, timeout, timeout. I, I'm calling yeah, yeah, timeout yeah, yeah. on this one here. <laughs> Sarah Price, you said you never ride with anybody. And this is, quote, Sarah. She goes, I don't do go well in the co-driver's seat. I refuse to ride with anybody. So this is making a statement here that you're riding with Shelby because, like, Sarah is self-proclaimed, I won't ever ride with anybody in the co-driver's seat ever, never, ever. And uh, now you're saying you did. So I, I got to hear this story now yeah so (laughs) we came in and uh i just got them driving shelby around and that's what rick geyser had uh you know asked us to do and and i think it was good and then uh when i got in with shelby uh he was like hey you get in the other seat now with shelby driving and i was like you sure like i don't know (laughs) and and then uh yeah so i was like shelby i'm putting complete trust in you right now and I, i honestly did tell her that and uh, I was like, okay, so any good driver, they always start with a good foundation and build off of that. I was like, you don't have to go out there and go fast or nothing. You know, you can always get to that by the end of the day. And she freaking went out there, and she was super solid, freaking killed it. I was like in a lazy boy just chilling in that other seat. It was like no big deal at all. So I was actually really surprised, and Shelby ended up freaking having a really fast pace and honestly we have the speed that's that's not that's kind of an issue in a way we have the speed because we have to tone it back so much to be able to to keep our smarts and wits about us that amount of time Mm -hmm. yeah it's that's the thing about (laughs) vegas torino it's keeping it together for uh what is it 539 miles you know it's one of those things I, like i i've had this conversation with travis pastrana last week you know and he's got a good mindset he's like i know this car will go fast he's like and you know but we're starting at the back and you know and so he's like man we got to run like 85 percent and then at the end of the race if you know we look at where we're at and he's like and then you pick it up you know but he's like if you run 110 percent right at mile marker one there's going to be no car left by mile 300 you know yep so, yeah, what did you think, Shelby? About... What um, did you think about me hopping in that seat with you? Honestly, I thought that would be better because I know that, in a way, Sarah and I have the same kind of driving style. And with her driving compared to Rick, because I hopped in with Rick first, and I, he drove me around and just kind of told me things to watch out for. And so when Sarah hopped in, I was like, okay, I feel a little better because I know the geysers really well because I grew up racing short course with them and core and stuff. And so I was, I was already pretty comfortable, but I'm still more comfortable with Sarah. And so I was like, okay, 
if I make like a little mistake, I, like I don't know how Rick's going to react. And so with Sarah in there, I just felt 100% comfortable. And I'm usually pretty good at holding my pace. I'm not going to go, if I don't feel comfortable, I'm not going to push it to where I'm uncomfortable and risk something happening to me or the truck or anything or even Sarah, whoever's in the code driver's seat. And so I honestly just kind of took it easy the first couple of times because we did a loop and I started feeling better and better and better. And so I just, every time I would get faster and faster in certain areas. And then by the end of the day, I felt like we were doing really well. And Sarah and I, you'd, we looked at videos and we're like, man, we look like we're going slow. And even when you're in the truck, you're like, man, I feel like I'm going slow. And then you look down and you're going 94, you're going 106 on a graded road. And we're like, oh, we're not going that slow. So it, it's cool. And I'm, I'm really excited. And like Sarah said, I definitely think we have a truck to be competitive and a lot of people are questioning how we are going to change a tire. And that was one thing that we, we practiced oh. a lot and we got it. Yeah. yeah. yeah we so got it to the point where we were under four minutes and I think they got to a point where there were three minutes and 30 seconds on changing a tire of us pulling up, getting out of the car with all of our gear on, jacking it up, changing the tire, getting back in and driving away. It was three minutes, 30 seconds. That's so not and that's I'm not worried about like it. Girls, I feel like you girls might get underestimated a little bit, but I don't think a lot majority of that field understands who you are and Sarah's background and being, you know, women in male dominated industry. It takes a special kind of girl to do what we do. And I think we are the most determined, the feistiest, the you know most willing to kind of put yourselves through whatever it needs to be to you know come out victorious and i think that that is what is going to really set you two apart is yeah you have the speed but i think you girls have the tenacity to really be able to carry yourself all the way through and 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 women are smart you guys are extremely smart and calculated and um i think it's really going to work to your advantage you know your how you girls are going to be able to bond and your cohesive bond together is going to really, you know, fare you two very well. Oh, we bonded. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> oh, we, uh, we have to use You know, that's half the battle. That's half the battle is to be able to have a team that, you know, you know, Jim and I have these other drivers on that they really talk about that trust and, um, you know, what's better than a two, you know, girl power team where you girls are friends you know, in the cab and off the cab, but you really trust each other. And I think that's going to be a huge competitive advantage. I totally agree. And that's something that like bringing on, like me and Erica have such a great dynamic and we work so well as a team. And it's not necessarily saying that either of us have so much experience in desert where we absolutely know it all. We, we don't. Yeah. But there's that, that level of trust that we have in each other. We can work together through anything and put put something in front of us and achieve it no matter how hard or impossible it is. And bringing on Jen Hellstrom, I feel like she was a great a great offset to Shelby because, you know, Shelby's a pretty intense little competitive little thing. <laughs> you know? And so bringing, bringing on Jen kind of like, you know, it, it eases her out a little bit, I think. And they, they that dynamic has created already such an incredible team between the two of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jen definitely like has been keeping me calm because I know I'm going to get to a point when we're driving and we're stuck behind somebody or we're just in a situation where I'm like, Ugh, come on. And my impatient self is going to be like, oh, and I'm going to have to try and keep it together. And I know Jen, because we tested a couple of times together when we were out in Parker and I just heard even her tone of voice is calm. And so I'm like, OK, this is going to be good. And even it's hard to find girls especially ones that are there's a lot of girls that aren't in motorsports so it's hard to find a girl period in motorsports but one that you fit well with and all of us when we all were together for the first time we all just meshed what like well and instantly and so that's when we all knew because we all just went down and sat and had lunch and all of us everybody just worked well together just at lunch like we all were laughing like we were friends instantly it seemed like and so after that it was like okay it's not business and or anything it's we're having fun we're doing this together and we're having this awesome amazing experience together yep. well i appreciate it's you guys awesome. taking the time to call in we're uh, up against a commercial break here but uh, thanks a lot good luck at vegas Torino. i'm sure we'll see you in a day or two uh out there we'll have to uh, have a chat
Yeah, we will. Yeah, good definitely. And talking. All right. Good luck, right, guys. Bell. Good luck. Bye, you guys. Kill it. And we'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars. Most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Celebrate Mexican Independence Day with the Selena Tribute Show. Los Chicos Del 512, live Saturday, September 16th, inside the showroom at the Blue Water Resort and Casino. Doors open at 6, show starts at 7 p.m. General admission just $20, or VIP tickets only $30. Available now at the Blue Water Resort and Casino, or visit BlueWaterFun.com. Blue Water Resort and Casino, right on the water, right on the money. MMA at its best, and it's back. It's the RUF 21. Live cage fights on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Saturday, September 9th. See Armando Murillo versus Daviante Jones. Live for the title. Doors open at 6 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now. General admission, just $15. Tickets available online or at the gift shop. Live cage fights on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. Got a short little segment here. We're going to throw some quick results from the weekend at you. Look like in uh, motocross outdoors, we were at Unadilla. It was uh, Marvin Muskeen followed by Martin Davalos, Cole Seeley on the podium in the 450 class. 250 class, it was Jeremy Martin, Joey Savacci, and Zach Osborne in your top three. We had Torque happening up there at Red Bud and uh, round nine results uh, for Pro Four. It was uh, Johnny Greaves, Ross Hook, CJ Greaves. Round 10, it was Keegan Kincaid, Johnny Greaves, Scott Douglas. Pro Two, it was Brad Lovell, Luke Johnson, Timothy Nelson. And then uh, round 10, Pro Two, it was Lovell again, Cody Conrad and Mark Peterson looking down the line at po- Pro Light. Your winner was Cam Ramers, Cody Kleeman, and then Kyle Kleeman on the podium. Cam Ramers, Sean Morris, and Chad Rayford on the podium in round number 10. Pro Mod UTV winner was CJ Greaves in round number nine. 
and it was Kyle Cheney in round 10. And your pro stock UTV winner was Zachary Martin and uh, in round 9 and Jake Lunderby in round 10. And uh, those are your results from this weekend from Lucas Oil Pro Motocross and the Torque Series. And we'll be back after this short break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount like what you hear catch all the back episodes of the down and dirty radio show on apple podcast and be sure to rate review and subscribe welcome back to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor jim beaver amy hood here getting ready to kick off a dirt fish rally report for this week brought to you by our good friends at dirt fish rally school find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com and use that coupon code jb dirtfish for 15 percent off any purchase uh, of a class at Dirtfish Rally School. And uh, action over the weekend, it was Atlantic City, New Jersey, with a doubleheader in the Red Bull Global Rallycross Series. And I got to tell you, it was all Scott Speed in New Jersey in both the first and the second round of the doubleheader in the supercars. Patrick Sandell with a podium for Subaru in the second spot there in, in day number one. And Steve Arpin with the Yet another solid effort with a podium finish there in third spot. Day number two in the supercars, it was Scott Speed again, but then you had Sebastian Erickson and Steve Arpin with yet another podium. And then looking at the overall Drivers' Championship right now, it's Scott Speed out front. Steve Arpin, he is right on Scott Speed's heels there in second, and then Tanner Faust sitting in third. Looking at GRC Lights results over the weekend, though, there in uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey, it was – let me see. I'll tell you here in a second. It was uh, Cyril Raymond followed by Connor Martell for Dirtfish Motorsports and Alex Keyes, one, two, and three. And then in the second round in the lights, it was Connor Martell with a win for Dirtfish followed by Christian Books and Travis Pecoy. And uh, that is your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. And uh, don't forget, use that coupon code JBDIRTFISH for 15% off your purchases of classes at Dirtfish Rally School. And uh, don't forget uh, Subaru Rally Team USA, uh, that amazing viral video series of theirs called Launch Control uh, that drops each and every Wednesday on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, award-winning series all about Pastrana, Higgins, uh, Patrick Sandell, Chris Atko Atkinson, and it sounds like uh, the Grabowski brothers may uh, make their way into that uh, into that video series at one point in time or another as well. So uh, lots of good stuff coming at you uh, from Subaru and our friends at Dirtfish Rally School. And uh, we're going to take a short break. We come back. We got uh, a little uh, a little Joe Duncan, and then we've got Ryder D. Francesco on the line. So uh, lots coming up here in hour number two of the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Your life.
Life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance. And that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. MMA at its best, and it's back. It's, it's the RUF 21. Live cage fights on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Saturday, September 9th. See Armando Murillo versus Daviante Jones. Live for the title. Doors open at 6 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now. General admission just $15. Tickets available online or at the gift shop. Live cage fights on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, joined on the line by my good friend Joe Duncan and surprise guest Levi Lavalley. This is our Terracross Starts with Optimus segment. Hey, we're getting a little feedback there. We got uh, the radio on or something, Joe? What's happening, my friends? <laughs> nope. All right. All, all good here. Can yeah. you hear me all right? Yeah, it's crystal clear. Levi on the line. How's it going, buddy? It's going well, man. How are you? Good. Looks like you're having a little oh, fun man. up there on the lake on the boat, trying to get in some uh, last runs before it decides to cool off up there, huh? Yeah, trying to take advantage of the boat. Uh, had a crazy um, crazy couple of weeks. Went from boating to snowmobiling in Chile and back to boating in, in uh, a little over a week. So, yeah, it's been a it's been a fun little run here. Well, I thought you were just... Oh, did you join the FXR boys in Chile there? I know um, a couple of my friends here from FXR went out to Chile, too, and I saw some photos, and wow, did that ever look awesome. Uh, you know, they were saying that you could... It was super warm, like, way up on the mountain. You didn't even need a jacket, and it was just unreal. It was. It was a lot of fun. You know, uh, there was a few different few different guys uh cory from fxr was there and and uh, yeah they were they were a lot of fun to hang out with and um the funny thing is you know everyone assumes that i'm like this like functional mountain rider and i actually (laughs) remind everyone like i live in minnesota (laughs) Mm -hmm. i grew up driving around in fields and in the woods not on mountains so um anyway i i go out there and chris brandt he is like phenomenal in the backcountry and he's mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, just come out in these trees with me. I'm like, sure. And uh, before long, I was missing my front tooth, and I decided that, um, that was, I needed to not follow uh, Chris anymore. <laughs> well, I, see, I saw... follow Corey. He's from the prairie. He should know how it is. I, I saw that, and I go, you know, I just thought you were turning redneck on me, Levi, and you and Hubert were going to get together, and you were going to start spitting tobacco, and you just needed that tooth to be gone so you could take up chewing, and you didn't have to open your mouth to spit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I, I I wish it was that easy. No, I, I actually um, I actually was, was going, this is the funny thing, is like, I, I'm going to say that I was, it was a very urgent moment that I needed to, like, get to where I needed, where I was going in a hurry. So what they said is we're all up the top of the hill 
and uh, they said, hey, we're going to have lunch down below at the bottom. And everyone takes off, and I, like, start side hilling down, and I'm like, okay, i got to cut back the other way. And when I went back the other way, the, the hill was kind of slippery. It was, a little, like, icier, and um, I didn't really get on that good of edge, so I'm sliding on my side, and I literally – hit the, this like four foot diameter tree with the top of my head and it pushed my jaw together so hard it exploded uh exploded my uh cap i had a you know my front tooth was fake to begin with but it, <laughs> it literally like exploded my tooth and i'm like oh my goodness i just broke my tooth off and then later i started finding like shrapnel in my mouth there's like pieces ah. of it in there. <laughs> oh, so, my- needless to say i so all these guys are sitting at the bottom of the hill and, um, you know, they hear this, this loud thud and like Chris Brandt, he's like, Oh man, somebody just punted into a tree with a sled. And he gets up there and he's like looking at the sled, the sled was okay. And he's like, dude, we thought we thought the sled hit a tree. It made this huge noise. And I'm like, no, that was my, that was the top of my head. (laughs) And it's like, yeah, so, so anyway, I smucked into it pretty good. Oh, my goodness, man. Well, yeah, between Chile and before that, I got to ask you, I know you weren't able to compete, but uh, uh, they had you on TV a bit, but to X Games in Minnesota, how was that, buddy? I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, you're kind of one of the faces of winter X Games, but how was it having, you know, summer X Games there in Minnesota? It was so awesome having it in Minnesota and the new – The new stadium, you know, the stadium alone is just, it's so cool. But one of the things that really stood out to me was, you know, watching the X Games, you'd look off to to the one side of the field and there's like all the moto stuff, the freestyle, there's, you know, quarter pipe, there's all these different dirt bike features. You look off to the other side, there's like a street park. And then, I mean, they had all of the, all of the things right in the stadium. And there were only like a couple things that were off site. But it was so cool because, I mean, you could just see – I mean, you could literally see, like, three different things going on at the same time. And, you know, it was really neat to uh, really neat to be able to do that. And we were fortunate enough to be able to hand out medals for best whip, so we got to go down on the floor and, and you know, check out the jumps and stuff. And it's it's like anything. Like, when you're down there and you're, you're right in front of the jump or right in front of that quarter pipe or any of that stuff, it looks so massive, but like TV, it just makes everything look like, oh yeah, I mean that's that looks kind of big, but I probably could do it. And and then once I get down there, I'm like, yeah, that's way over my head. Yeah, no, no quarter pipe on a snowmobile anytime soon for you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't mind giving a rip, but I don't know if I'm ready to send it like those guys were. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, speaking hey, of sending, you it... think think we should try that? Yeah. I <laughs> I wouldn't mind testing it. <laughs> I've got an idea in my head for step up for razors, Joe Duncan. So I, I'm looking at the oh. like the the mangler that we've got at uh, Heydays, you know, where you come out of the pit, you know. And I'm looking at that, going, you know, we could probably have like a step up competition in razors using something like that, you know. I don't know, just brainstorming here, Joe. We'll let you take that where you want to. Oh. <laughs> All we need is a sponsor, Jim, and I can I can pretty much make about anything happen when it comes to an event. Yeah. <laughs> So speaking of uh, heydays, Levi, I mean, it's the kickoff to snow season. I know last year, you know, we saw you, uh, I, you know, was fortunate enough to be down there on, uh, you know, on the ground floor when you jumped and it's just an insane 200 foot jump, but uh, um, heydays coming up. I mean, it's kind of the kickoff to snow season. It's, you know, uh, you know, you got to be pretty darn excited about heydays coming around. I, I'm always excited about heydays. You know, it's really fun. Like I, I, everyone, um, it's funny because I go all summer and I'm like out out in the boat and I'm riding my dirt bike and I'm doing all that stuff and everyone's like, oh, snow, snow, snow. And, and I, like, I, I love, like, I love the seasons. I love summer and, you know, I love winter. And But it's usually, like, by the time heydays comes, I'm ready for winter, you know. I've, like, had my summer fun and it's like I'm ready to shift gears, get on the sled and start uh, start doing that. And, and, you know, the fun part is when you go to heydays, everyone there is thinking the exact same thing and it's just fun to get together and feel all that energy and you know and then the other the awesome part is like everybody has all the new products the new sled all the new the new stuff and all the hype is there and uh, you know it's been it's been such a such a cool event to to be a part of and i mean I, i've been going to haiti since i was seven years old you know so it's like the, the better part of my life i've been going to haiti with my dad 
And I mean, that's where we got, we got my first snowmobile there back in 91 or something. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty cool event. And I imagine I'll probably go there till, uh, till I, I can't walk anymore. I can't, uh, can't even make it. So yeah. What, what are the odds we see you in a razor this year? Uh, you know, going, uh, going around that, uh, dirt track there in the center of the, uh, center of heydays. <laughs> I, you know what? I had a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun running, running aircraft and running the razors. Um, but I need to, if I were to do that, I need to get down to business. I got to start practicing or something. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't been in my razor, been spending way too much time, uh, too, too much time playing around and doing everything but racing. So, so we'll see. I don't know if I'll be out there this year, but, uh, you know, hopefully we can do it again in the future. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, my friend, to call in. Uh, you know, always good catching up with you. Hope all is well with you and the wife and the kids, and uh, we'll definitely have to talk soon. Sounds good, man. All right. Thanks a lot, Levi. Thanks, Joe. Yep. Bye now. Thanks, yeah. Jimmy. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. All right. That was uh, Levi LaValle and Joe Duncan. That was our Terracross Starts with Optimus segment brought to you by our good friends at Optimus Starters. Uh, starting every uh, Razor in the Terracross Championship as well as the Polaris Razor Star Car. We're going to take a short commercial break. We come back. We got Ryder DeFrancesco on the line coming off a big win at Loretta's. Uh, all that and more. Jolene Van Butte still coming up in hour number two as well on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. MMA at its best, and it's back. It's, it's the RUF 21. Live cage fights on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Saturday, September 9th. See Armando Murillo versus Daviante Jones. Live for the title. Doors open at 6 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now. General admission just $15. Tickets available online or at the gift shop. Live cage fights on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? 
Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here, joined on the line by uh, Ryder DeFrancesco. How's everything going, Ryder? Hey, Ben. Good. How are you? We are uh, we are doing uh, doing pretty solid. Pretty fun, good. fun day here. Uh, uh, stoked to have you back. I think it's been a couple of months, and you have been busy, man. Yeah, I just got done with the Loretta's. Uh, won a title there. But yeah, I think the last time we talked was right before the Junior Moto X race. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was right before uh, Junior Moto X. I think uh, what was it? Uh, I don't know. This spring, sometime. I think. Um, but yeah, we talked about Loretta's and and things like that. I know. Uh, I don't know how many uh, how many Loretta's championships have you got now? I have four. You got four. You're up to four. I don't know. And was this one any different from you? I mean, 2016. I know you had a little bit of a tough a tough year. So were you uh, you know more excited to get? a little bit of revenge and some payback and come up on the top of the box this year? Yeah, last year, 2016, it was a little tough. I just had to put my head down that year. And I was on the KX65, so tried to do whatever I could on that. But this year, was I just really put my head down and knew I had to win because it was my year, and I got her done. Yeah. So, uh, question for you. I mean, uh, you know, obviously you've won a, won a lot of titles on some of the smaller bikes. I mean, uh, you know, I, I got a question. I mean, have you, uh, you know, how often do you, have you trained on like a bigger bike just to kind of see, you know what I mean? What, what it's like, I mean, riding on one, I mean, have you, uh, you know, you sat on one, I mean, what's, uh, what's the plans? I mean, obviously you've won a ton of, ton of titles. You keep winning every year. I mean, what, what's the plan here, you know, in the next couple of years and the progression for your career? I haven't rode any bigger bikes um i just played around on a super mini but this next like next six months we'll probably get a super mini and probably just uh play around on that for next year and Mm -hmm. just really play around until this next like we're freestone and the junior moto x i think we'll do some of those on super mini but yeah i haven't really been riding bigger bikes so i'm just riding 85. Yeah, well, that jump from a 65 to an 85 is, you know, is is pretty big, and especially not even coming off a win at Lorette is on 65. You know, it must be pretty good from jumping from the 65 to an 85. And, you know, Ryder, you're not a stranger to the top of the box here. So dominant in your area qualifier and your regionals, and you are always that guy to beat in the amateur scene. But, you know, coming into Loretta Lynn's this year on an 85, like who was your toughest competitor? Who was the guy that you knew that you had to step your game up for on the 85? Well, Jet Reynolds, me and him practice all the time. Yeah. Um, we try to chase each other. And at Loretta's, I really just tried to stick behind him. And once I could, pass him. But yeah. me and him are pretty close. Does that make it more fun and, having your friend? being able to race against yeah. one of your buddies that you do train with? I think so, because at our practice track, we play around or do motos together, and then we go to the big nationals, and it's kind of just like we're doing a practice uh, moto at the track. So it's kind of close, and it's pretty fun. Yeah, you guys have the pressure off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have any bragging rights between you guys, though? Is it like, hey, I got <laughs> the best of you today, you know, or something like that? Is any bragging rights between friends? No, not really. No, not really. Oh, good sportsmanship, boss, yeah. that I like to hear. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So uh, I got to ask too, Ryder, I mean, uh, you know, we, we talk about I've had, uh, you know, we've had, I think we had, was it Ryan Dungey on air at the same time you were on last time, I think. But, uh, you know, talking with Ryan, you know, in his career, I mean, like fitness is such a big deal. And you you look at what Ken Roxon's going through and, and all the top Supercross and motor riders, it's all about fitness. I mean, you know, you're a young kid, mm-hmm. but, I mean, I- as far as fitness goes, I mean, have you started getting into like a training? regimen you know what i mean working out and running and things like that cycling yeah um just two days a week uh my friend owns a cross uh gym so we go there two times a week but not really i just hang out with my friends and try to run around get some uh activity going yeah be a kid be a normal kid i like that you know it's uh it keeps it fun you see a lot of these kids come in and you know they're 
they get really pushed and forced and they get burnt out pretty easy. But have you ever, you know, gone through that period where you kind of feel a little burnt out? Are you really enjoying your journey and having fun with it? You know, you always look like you're the kid who's having a great time off the track and it really shows on the track because, you know, you've been doing this for so long and you've been so successful. Yeah, we went hard, like right before the Rotas, doing everything we could. Um, yeah. After the Rotas, I've been take, I took like a week off, and I'm still taking it off. And I'll ride probably this Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Um, this, that's why I'm taking this week off. Really, is not mm-hmm. to get into that period of getting burnt out. Yeah. Well, what what yeah. is what what okay. is what do you do for fun when you're not on the bike? You uh, what uh, what, what do you uh, what are you normally doing? Uh, there's some friends in the neighborhood I hang out with. Um, there's Jet Reynolds lives right down the street. Uh, I have some more friends around the uh, Bakersfield. Yeah, you into you into video games? I gotta ask. I got I, I got a feeling that I know the answer. No. No, you're not. Wow, yes. that one was a shocker <laughs> right there. Me, What's <laughs> that's good. I feel like you're the kid who goes plays outside at the skate park and you know, wrecking nice. some golf carts or whatnot. Yeah. Oh yeah, wrecking some golf carts. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Okay, so you know, Loretta's is a pretty intense race. You know, it's, there's lots on on the line there. But I've been there too, and you know, Loretta's is one of the funnest races at at the same time. You know, with the lazy river, there's a mechanical bull. You see everybody on the golf carts making tracks, and you know what's your what's the funnest thing that you like to do at Loretta Lynn when you're not racing? I like to float down the river with my friends. Or drive yeah. on our golf carts or ride pit bikes. That's I try not to get in trouble for the races. That's all. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> a smart kid. I like it. You, uh, that's a good thing. yeah, you are a smart kid, right? So I, I got to ask. I know, yeah. uh, um, I know we talked last time, you know, about uh, you know the, Kevin Harvick and uh, you know and KHI and, and how phenomenal they've been. You've got these amazing partners. Yeah, had had a chance to uh, to fly on that uh, fancy jet again. Mm-hmm. No, I haven't. No. Uh, the Jimmy John convention's coming up, so we might do it again. All right, you gotta. So I gotta ask too. I, I'm a big fan of Jimmy John's. What's your What's your favorite sandwich at Jimmy John's? <laughs> uh, the number two. The number two, right? It, Which is what? What is that? It's a uh, roast beef. All right. Oh, Ooh, solid, a- solid, solid. <laughs> Definitely a, definitely a good thing. So, yeah, do you have, like, some special VIP card when you go into Jimmy John's where you just flash it and it's like, oh, it's on the house, right? It doesn't have to pay. Like, do you have, like, that special card where it's like, you know what I mean? Like, you get to flash it and it's like all you can eat for free because you're sponsored by Jimmy John's? Yeah, it's called the Black Card, and only eight people has got them. So, yeah, we just go in there and swipe it. Oh, no man. That, I, I'm feeling that. Yeah. So. I, I know KHI yeah. is tuning in right now. Like, if you need a radio host, professional race car driver, you need to represent. Like, I need a black car. We can get Jimmy Johns and some national commercial inventory, and I could use a black car here on the Down and Dirty Show. I can tell you that already. Man, I, I'm a little jealous of that rider. Like, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty pretty good stuff there. Only eight people have a black car, man. That's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're living. Yeah. That's... And we don't even have a Jimmy Johns here in Manitoba. There's none here. So, <laughs> I'm already, like – two down right now yeah so so Ryder before we let you go what's up next for you guys obviously coming off Loretta's I know you're taking a little break and uh and definitely uh definitely feeling that man that's uh um that's good you know gets uh you know get some fresh air but uh, what's up next for you guys Tonka is I think the end of October uh like the middle of October we'll uh practice there race there try win some championships and that's what's next yeah. So, uh, so does the now being on an eighty-five? Does um, you have to educate me here? I know that with the Monster Energy Cup, that they do have a, a eighty-five class. Is that a super mini class, or are you eligible to ride in that class there for MEC? Um, you have to be thirteen, and you have to have a oh, you have okay. to ride a super mini. Okay, yeah, because I'm waiting for the day that you get to line up at MEC. I'm excited to see you, uh, you know, see that transition for you on that type of track. Yeah, that'll be next year. Yeah, you, that's got to be something you're looking. I'll keep my eyes up for that. Yeah, you you got to be looking forward to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, any uh, any. I mean, you, I got to ask you. I don't think we asked this last time. What's what's your favorite track? I mean, you get to travel around the country, ride all these amazing tracks and things like that. I mean, is there mm-hmm. one that you really really like to ride that you look forward to going to every year? I like the Reds. I don't. I'm not really like really? the track when I'm there racing, but I think it'll be it'll be a fun practice track. But I like I like riding that track. Yeah, well, it's been good to you, man. I mean, you, you've uh, won, yeah. <laughs> you know, countless races I there. I think everybody else hates that track, rider. Yeah. I think you're one of the very few and far between who likes it. And, you know, it's either blistering hot, over 100 degrees, or you guys are racing in extreme torrential downpour, hurricane rain. Yeah. So you're a, you're very special to like it as much. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to call in, Ryder. More than welcome any time to come on air, man. Uh, good luck this uh, this fall at your races, and uh, uh, you know, definitely looking forward to catching back up to you uh, with you. But uh, you know, congrats on the win at Loretta's, and uh, you know, always fun having you on, for, buddy. Yeah, thank bud. you. All right, thanks a lot, Ryder. See you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Always fun catching up with Ryder, man. Talk about a good kid, Amy, with a He's good awesome. head on his shoulders. Um, I know. Yeah. I love that he doesn't spend, you know, all the time training and, you know, he has fun with his friends and that's what, you know, he talks about. And that it's really cool. I mean, I feel like he's a kid who's going to have a long career because he loves what he does and likes doing it with his buddies. Yeah. Very humble. Um, you know, won all these yeah. championships, just very, he's just a kid. He's having a good time. Yeah. You know, he, they're, they're not overworking him. They're not having crazy trading regimens. They're giving him time off, uh, you know, and, and I love that he's an outdoor kid. He's not sitting there on the Xbox, you know what I mean, all the time. And, like, it's so awesome. Like, you know, it just, he's one of those you look and I'm like. You know what that means? Good parenting. Yes. If your parents, if his parents are listening, you know, you're doing it right. Um, I'm 28 years old and then I still love riding dirt bikes because my parents never pushed me and I, you know, always enjoyed what I did. I know it's probably on a bit of a different level, but if you always keep that fun factor, then, you know, you'll have someone who is interested for a lifetime. So good parenting. Yep, absolutely. Stoked to have him on. Looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, what uh, the years ahead hold for Ryder. But uh, we're going to take a short yeah, break. Sure. And uh, when we come back, we've got to Jolene Van Viet on the line talking about some uh, Polaris Razor Star Car and uh, uh, what's up next for her in 2017. That coming up after the break. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound Do you race or are you a weekend warrior? Have you checked on the date on your helmet recently? Don't get caught off guard by using an outdated helmet. Impact Racing, the leader in motorsport safety, has new SA 2015 helmets to fit your budget. Whether you're looking for a helmet with a full carbon fiber shell to take you to victory at the Indy 500, or just looking for some helmets for a weekend at Glamis, Impact Racing has a helmet for you. Find out more information at impactraceproducts.com or on Facebook at Impact Safety. 
Since 1970, KC Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports, beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems. KC Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC highlights the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my Razor Star Car teammate, one of my uh, good friends, Jolene Van Butte, to the line. I know you're out having a little fun today. What's happening, Joe? Hey, how's it going, Jimmy? Yeah, I totally am. I've pushed myself out of my element one more time. I'm out there at the Noma Raceway, and I'm trying some sport bike riding. Uh, I've never done it before, uh, you know, barely really been on one of those. I, I, I grew up riding an R6 with my dad having that just a little bit, you know, through town, but never, never sat on one of these race bikes and definitely never hit a track. So I'm um, really excited for the day. So, uh, yeah, so doubling, uh, stunt doubling for Anne Hathaway on that crazy Batmobile Catwoman bike wasn't enough, we're, we're, but we're going to try sport bike riding. So I, I, it's got to be a bit easier than that, than that thing, though. That thing weighed, like, what, 10,000 pounds that you were riding. Yeah, the the learning curve for the bat pod was a little bit bigger um, than uh, than this, but it's, it's definitely going to be an, an interesting day. I'm I'm really excited to learn and uh, see what it's all about, and just go for that adrenaline like usual. It's funny enough, uh, the person that brought me out here was somebody that I met and worked with on Dark Knight, one of the other um, stuntmen, Steve DeCastro, and. He's been, you know, riding these for many years, and it's one of his passions. And I just, every time I saw him post on Instagram, I'm like, man, i got to go do that with you. I've always wanted to do it. And he was able to arrange uh, for me to come up here to Sonoma. It was really nice for him to get me a bike and, and get me all set up. Yeah, well, and for somebody like you, I mean, obviously we know your dirt bike background, but you also, you know, ride Harleys a bit and things like that. I mean, uh, you know, people be like, oh, this is really easy for her to make that transition. But sport bike riding, I mean, everybody I've talked to that's done it, I mean, it's its own specific niche, you know. it's It takes a while to get up to speed, right? Definitely. I mean, that's with anything on two wheels. I know, you know, people out of industries always think, oh, well, you can ride a motorcycle, you can ride anything. And, and yeah, I'm fully capable of getting on the motorcycle and making it move, but getting it around the track at high speeds with the proper body positioning. I mean, that's all stuff you have to learn. So each one of these industries that all have two wheels and a motor, uh, they're not the same. And it, and it does take a little bit of having someone willing to teach you what it's all about. Yeah. Well, it, and it's probably the same. Like people look at you and be like, Oh, Joe can, can ride razors. We've seen her in Terracross. We've seen her at Pastrana land. And then we've got star car. And as you know, it's a completely different animal in the desert, you know, whether it is, you know, than it is say at hay days or ripping around Pastrana land. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, each one of these industries has its own, its own differences. And uh, yeah, you just got to go out there and give it your all. Yeah. So talking about star car, we got a, you and I, I know, like Trav has been texting me from uh, from the beginning, you know what I mean? And he's like, yeah. you know what I mean? Since Star Car began, and he was like pumped you were involved, and like he he's really like behind the scenes. I knew he was kind of interested in it because he's asking me about the car and the build and things like that, you know. But uh, I know I told you I said, hey, we're gonna try and get Trav involved in this. You were excited, but like I. You know, getting him, you know, where he's excited about something is one thing, but getting all the things dotted and, you know, all the I's dotted, the T's crossed, that's another. But to have him coming into Star Car at Vegas Torino, I mean, I know I'm excited. I know you're excited. I mean, you know, he's excited. I mean, this is uh, this is pretty darn cool, Joe. You guys go back a long, long time. 
Yeah, I mean, we've been uh, riding the razors a lot there at the house, and he definitely loves them just like I do. I, you know, like it's something we use almost day to day just to go out and ha- go out back and have some fun. He takes his daughters for rides all the time and, and stuff like that. So it, it, he definitely wanted to participate in this. But as we know, Travis has a crazy, hectic schedule, and he can't do everything that oh he always wants to do. It just doesn't fit in to the schedule. You know, there's not enough time in a year to do everything. And we definitely got lucky enough, you know, that he was able to take this small bit of time and join this race with us. And he's an awesome, as you know, an amazing, awesome talent. He's a competitor. He loves razors. And I think we're just going to have a blast out there. And I think we're going to get a good result. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, and talking with him, like, off the record and on the record, I mean, we've done that interview here about a week ago, you know, where we are talking about Star Car with him. But, like, he's got a really good game plan. And I know, like Travis said, he's like, last time I was in the desert was a mint 400. Nobody had me going but 10 miles without a wreck in the truck. And he's like, we will finish Vegas Torino. He's like, if we yeah. finish, I guarantee he's like, we're in the top 10. And he's like, look, he's like, we start 47th out of 50. He's like, finishing in the top 10 out of 50 cars. He's like, in my book, that's a win. And I'm like, well, at least Trav's got the right mindset. Like, let's go to the finish. Let's see how the cards lay. And he goes, you know, last 150 miles, like, if we're in it, he's like, we need to drop the hammer and win this thing. But he's like, we got to let the race come to us. So I'm like, all right, Trav's in the right mindset for this. He's already got this desert racing thing figured out. You know, we got we to gotta be there at the finish. So it got me pretty excited. You know, it's like, you know, I think he's approaching this thing with the right mindset. It's not like, oh, let's go out and, you know, over all the thing in the first 100 miles. And as you've learned, you know. Definitely not. And, it, and the thing is with Trav, that's how he thinks about everything. It's just not, oh, people don't always see that as the end result. Because he does push it and, and he does have crashes he does DNF and you know there are problems with his cars or vehicles or whatever it is he's competing with um but he he's very smart and he knows exactly how he needs to do what just sometimes doesn't always work but that's our game plan for this and same with me you know we're there we want to be competitive we want to finish the race for sure but hey, if we can get up in that top 10, that's going to be amazing. Yeah, well, and how, how is desert racing? I mean, you know, we're, we're two, uh, two events in now. Joe, you've been behind the wheel two different events. I mean, uh, you know, going, going into the men, I know it was a bit of unknown. We did some testing, but, I mean, you got a couple of races under your belt. I mean, how are you feeling about this whole move to desert racing and, you know, and, and you know what it takes to, to finish these races? Desert racing uh, definitely was a, a new animal for me, for sure. I, I didn't. I guess I didn't really realize how aggressive it was with your body and how it just jumbles everything around. Um, So I I definitely, that was sort of a new thing for me. Yeah. Well, and I know you, like, what's going on with your hand? So I got to ask about that because here I am, your teammate. I'm going to be riding in the car with you. And uh, it looks like you shot a hole in your hand up there in, uh, what was it, in Canada, right? You were downhill mountain biking. And I'm like, looking at that, I'm like, Joe, like, like, what are you doing to yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's been a few busy weeks for me. I went out on the Razor ride with Huber on his big redneck adventure there and did a few days there. Then I jotted up to uh, Whistler because I was going to uh, go and ride Crankworks. So I was just there to ride and have fun and uh, support my sponsor, uh, Giant and uh, Liv. And I got there a day early and was like, oh, hanging out with my friend Rory Bridgefield, who most people know. And He's like, let's take a hike. I was like, oh, my God, that sounds awesome. So we hiked up to this waterfall. We're having a great time. And just on the way back, I slipped and fell on just this mossy log. And when I put my hand out to brace myself, I got impaled um, by, like, a broken off stub, basically. It went right through my hand. And I fell. Roy turns out. I was like, oh, my God, are you okay? And I was like, uh, I don't think so. And we could both see, like, right into my hand. It was so deep. It hadn't even started bleeding yet. Um, so, you know, I started... Rory pulled some moss out of it. I pushed a bunch of blood out of it to make sure it got a little bit clean. Uh, we wrapped it up with the cloth that I had and hiked out. And then we had to get in the boat, ride the boat out for a little while, and then we had to get on the mountain bikes and ride those to his car um, and then go to the hospital. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see my hand getting uh, taken care of at the emergency room, you go to my Instagram. <laughs> I post the video. <laughs> thing was gnarly my wife actually texts me and she's like have you seen jolene's hand she's like is she gonna be able to race with you and i'm like i looked at that and i'm like ah i'm like jolene i said if the hand is still on her body she'll be racing <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. this was so i figured this- you, you had 
you thought I haven't heard anything from her saying I'm out, then I just assumed you knew I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what's funny. I'm like, this is so not the story I was expecting. Like, I'm expecting Joe to say, like, yeah, I was doing downhill mountain biking. I came up short on this no. double, and the handlebar went through my hand. It's like, no, nah, I slipped on a log. <laughs> no, I, I didn't even get to the mountain bike uh, part of my trip at that point. I did, I did just, you know, get it to the up, wrap it up, and suck it up, and try to, try to do a few runs because I was there, and I wanted to enjoy the event. And uh, Live Cycling was putting on this amazing uh, women's event on Sunday morning. Uh, so I went, you know, got myself geared up and went up the mountain to be a part of that. So it was great. Yeah. How is downhill mountain biking? I mean, I've done it a bit, but for somebody like you who's done a lot of motocross and things like that, I mean, these bikes are crazy. They're like a mini motocross bike. I mean, how, how is that the experience for you? I love the downhill. I don't get to do it very much. I mean, my experience doing it is not very much. Uh, a few years ago, I, I went to Crankworx with uh, Giant, and they set us up with bikes, and Tara and I took off, and we hit the trails, and it was amazing. I had never downhill mountain biked before that, and I had such a blast, and it was just fit, like, so well into my wheelhouse, uh, and I've, you know, been so busy, and a lot of things have happened in the two years since, but I just haven't been able to get back to, to doing it again, and this is the first time I was able to get back to the event and back to, you know, that type of level of downhill mountain biking. And unfortunately, I hurt myself. I was pretty bummed out. Yeah, well, and I got to ask about Tara. I'm like, man, I, I haven't even thought about that. But I'm like, you've had to have kind of nudged her. Hey, you interested in doing a razor in the desert with us? Like, I think she'd be a pretty cool teammate at one of these events, Joe. Yeah, I mean, I actually haven't really asked her that she would, though. <laughs> I was, I was just thinking, I'm, thought like, about it, actually. I'm like, with her sure. background and like off-road bikes and enduro and, you know, I'm like, eh, she'd be like pretty solid, I think. Like, I think that's one of those. We need, we need to start uh, texting with yeah, Tara, maybe. And, Tara and see. definitely maybe. have to ask her because I'm not, she's been at Trask a lot. And she's been around races, but I've never really seen her take too much interest. But maybe she just needs to be, uh, yeah. Yeah. Prod of the littler, yeah. given the opportunity. We'll put her through like the Sarah Price training regimen for razors or something like that, and like get her up to speed. Yeah. I'm sure you guys can have a ton of fun uh, doing some practicing or something like that. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, have well to... speaking of Sarah, how stoked are you for the girls in that race that they're going to do together? So ridiculously amped. I've been getting texts right? from Shelby, oh my God, from Shelby so and Sarah. For them. Like, smile ear to ear when I heard about it. I'm just so ecstatic like they did they crushed it last time and the fact that they're you know adding two more very talented women uh i can't wait to see what they're gonna do here i'm so proud of them all yeah i know she's been, her and shelby have both we've got like a group text going on how to cycle you into the group text uh because it's pretty cool like it's just shenanigans like full-on like they are so ridiculously excited um it's yeah it's so so awesome i'm pumped for them i can't wait to catch up with them at Vegas Torino in the flesh. I mean, we've got them on the show today, but, uh, like, I'm so excited to uh, to catch up with them and, like, you know, see and talk to right. them about it. And, you know, it's, like, it's just an exciting thing and to see, you know, four talented women be able to go out and do what they're doing. Like, I think it's uh, it's pretty awesome. I know. I, I kind of I wish I was part of it. <laughs> Not so long. So pumped for them, and it's such a rad thing to see so many great women all together doing a race together. No offense, Jimmy. I'm yeah. really excited to do this race in your chat, too. Yeah. But that's just a really cool, unique thing they're doing. Yeah, there's a lot of storylines at Vegas Torino. I mean, we've got Travis coming back to the desert. We've got the all-women 6100 team. Like, I think it's uh, it's going to be a fun event for everybody. I mean, there's so many storylines in this thing. I mean, 539 miles, Jolene. I mean, this is a, it's a long event. It's going to gonna take a bit to, to get us to the finish line, but I think we can I think we can all do it. I think that makes a good storyline for us to have some drinks in Reno afterwards, right? I think so. I definitely think so. So... Well, I'm excited to uh, you know to see you here in uh, in Vegas in uh, in a day or so, and uh, you know should uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Going to be quite the adventure with you, me, and Travis all the way to Reno. I think so. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah. This is uh, this is what this me program too. is all about. Like you and I t said in the beginning, like it's all about having fun and doing rad stuff with cool people. And uh, I think you, me, and Travis. I can't think of any more rad people for you know for you and us to you and I to be doing this program with. So. I don't know. It's going to be Definitely. fun. Definitely. I 
you know, has been stepping away from Nitro and not getting to really do a lot of cool things with Trav anymore and, and traveling around. And, and he's, you know, he's busy and I'm busy. We're off doing separate things. Yeah, it's been kind of a bummer. So we're both just really excited to be back doing something together. Um, you know, we miss that, that part of, of what that was. Yeah, it was like I got a I got a call from Trav and Lindsay was there and it was like on speakerphone and he's like, "All right, we're gonna do this," but Lindsay's got a couple of questions. I'm like, so <laughs> I, uh, I I get, I guess I, I I alleviated any nerves or something like that, and then I I think they've got like a, a plan to go up to uh, Tahoe with Roners or something like that. So I think it's like we're, we're all good. So uh, I think yeah. it's, he's making a family vacation out of it, so it should uh, should all be good. Yeah, definitely. So. All right, Jolene, well, I appreciate you taking the time. We'll let you get back to some sport bike riding, and we'll see you in Vegas here in about a day or so. And we'll be back after this on the Down to Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down to Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. MMA at its best, and it's back. It's, it's the RUF 21. Live cage fights on the river in the Blue Water Resort and Casino Showroom. Saturday, September 9th. See Armando Murillo versus Daviante Jones. Live, Live for the, the title. title. Doors open at 6 p.m. Get your $25 ringside tickets now. General admission, just $15. Tickets available online or at the gift shop. Live, Live cage, cage fights fight. on the river. Blue Water Resort and Casino. Right on the water. Right on the money. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here wrapping things up on another edition of your favorite motorsports radio show. Uh, man, what a guest list today. Jolene Van Vute, Ryder DeFrancesco. We had uh, Levi LaValle and Joe Duncan on. Sarah Price, Shelby Anderson. 
Uh, Parker Grabowski, the Grabowski brothers. Uh, fun, fun show. Thanks to all you for tuning in. Um, you know, make sure and uh, listen to those back episodes. We are in national syndication. All the details at sportsbyline.com or on the new website. Definitely check that out at downanddirtyshow.com. Don't forget, I will be live from General Tire at the 2017 Vegas General Tire Vegas Torino this Thursday, um, uh, the 17th, uh, from Contingency. Go live at 10.30 a.m. We've got Jerry Zayden, Jim Riley, uh, Travis Pastrana, Jolene Van Viet, and the rest of Team General Tire all going to be on air with me uh, from the event. So uh, definitely uh, make sure to check it out. Um, all this stuff will be posted to my social media. We just dropped a new Travis Pastrana video uh, for Vegas Torino uh, on my Facebook page as well. Check that out. Make sure and share it. Uh, like it uh, and let everybody know about it. Uh, you know, make sure and follow me. It's at Jim Beaver 15 on all social media. Amy is at Amy Hood 71. Don't forget we're on iTunes with two shows, Project Action and the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Make sure and rate, review, subscribe. Looking for a discount at Dirtfish? Don't forget to use that coupon code JB Dirtfish for 15% off your classes. Um, Give a, you know, got to give a big shout out to all our partners here supporting us, keeping us going over 300 episodes. Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, KC Highlights, Gibson Exhaust, Dirtfish, Impact, OTSFF, Transportation, Optimus Starters, Terracross, and the Blue Water Resort and Casino. And most of all, thank you to all of you guys for tuning in each and every week. We'll be back next week with more. And uh, don't forget, follow along Razor Star Car this weekend at Vegas Torino. Be safe. As always, game on.